Hello and welcome to all to this lecture series on fluid mechanics. Okay, this is lecture four, hydrostatic forces on surfaces. So let us begin. See a plate, a plate, gate valve in a dam. The wall of a liquid storage tank is subjected to fluid pressure distributed over its surface when exposed to a liquid. Okay, means whether it is the gate valve in a dam or the wall of the wall of the container or the liquid storage tank in which the liquid is kept all these plane surfaces or the surfaces rather it can be plane it can be curved they are subjected to some kind of a fluid pressure okay which is distributed over its surface okay and this fluid pressure is determined by its magnitude and its point of application means that fluid pressure has two two uh, two things means it has got a magnitude and it has got a its point of application okay magnitude is represented by the total pressure force means there is a pressure and there is a pressure force means the pressure multiplied by the area that is the pressure force okay that is the magnitude and the point of application is represented by the center of pressure denoted by h bar and this total pressure force is denoted by F subscript total, F total, okay? So this total pressure force is nothing but the pressure into area, that is the pressure force. And this center of pressure is the point of application of this pressure force, means at which point throughout the body, at which point this entire pressure force is acting, that is known as the center of pressure, okay? So total pressure force or F total, it is the force exerted by a static fluid. Okay, please remember the word static. Please remember the word static. Static fluid on the surface with which the fluid comes into contact. Okay, the surface, the surface maybe as I have told you can be plain also and can be curved also. Okay, and the center of pressure, it is the point of application of the total pressure force on the surface. Okay, so first of all, we have different kinds of plane surfaces horizontal vertical inclined and then we have curved surface so let us start with a horizontal plane surface okay see this is a surface this is a surface this is a horizontal surface kept at a distance of or kept at a height x bar below the free liquid surface okay there is all water over it okay and this is the center of gravity of the surface okay we have the fluid we have the fluid whose specific weight is omega rho g okay and the plane surface is located at a depth of x bar below the free liquid surface area of the plate is a and so f total is pressure into area and pressure is what pressure is rho g x bar okay rho g x bar so this is omega x bar into area is a so f total is omega a x bar okay and since this entire surface is at the same depth from the free liquid surface so center of pressure will also lie at the depth of x bar from the free liquid surface so in this case h bar that is the center of pressure is equal to x bar this is the simple case or the most simple case in case of the hydrostatic forces okay that is the horizontal plane surface at a depth of at a certain depth from the free liquid surface okay then another case we have some more somewhat bit more complicated case that is known as an inclined plane surface okay another again the same thing that specific weight of the fluid is omega rho g plane surface is inclined okay this, this is a plane surface this is the inclined this is the end view or the side view which we are seeing this is the edge view okay and this is the normal view when we are seeing from this side if we see from this side how we will see we will see like this okay and this is the whole center of gravity this is g this is g this is located at a depth of x bar from the free liquid surface area of the plate is a we know that f total is equal to pressure into area that is again omega x bar into a so f total is equal to omega a x bar okay and h 
bar that is known as the center of pressure that is given by ig sin square theta upon ax bar plus x bar where this ig is the second moment of in a second moment of area about the center of gravity in the plane of surface that means that this ig is the uh, second moment of area about this axis about the center of gravity in this axis because this is the axis lying in the plane of the surface and this angle theta is this angle of inclination with the horizontal free liquid surface and this a is the area x bar is the uh, depth at which the center of gravity of the body is lying okay so how this expression has been derived you can look at some standard book for this derivation it's very simple derivation just a two three uh, lines derivation okay you can just look at it there and the final expression i am telling you is this okay this is for the inclined case then in this inclined case from this inclined case we can arrive at both the cases of horizontal as well as vertical how by just changing the value of theta okay this is the special case when theta is equal to 90 degree just look back at to this when this angle of theta will become 90 degree that means it will be a vertical surface it will be a vertical surface okay then h bar will be equal to what ig sin square theta and sin square 90 degree is 1 so that is ig a x bar plus x bar and when this theta is equal to 0 again have a look at it when this theta becomes equal to 0 that means it's a horizontal surface okay it's a horizontal surface then in case of the horizontal surface i have already told you h bar is equal to x bar okay then we have something known as pressure diagram so what is this the graphical representation of variation of intensity of pressure over the plane surface see you have a plane surface and you have a plane surface horizontal surface you can see that the pressure intensity at each and every point will be same because it is omega into x bar and x bar is same okay x bar is constant for each and every point for a horizontal plate so this is the pressure diagram simple pressure diagram for a horizontal plate in the case of vertical plate you can see that this is omega into h1 okay and this is omega into h2 because this this as this depth will keep on increasing the pressure will keep on increasing okay so this will be less and this will be more similarly in the case of uh, inclined plane this will be less because this height is h1 is less and this height is h2 is more so this pressure will be more and please make a note of very important very important point that this pressure will always act Per or always act perpendicular to the surface this is the surface you can see this is acting perpendicular this is the surface you can see it is acting perpendicular and this is also a surface and this is also acting perpendicular to it or normal to it okay please make a note of it that always these pressures will act always act normal to the surface this is the definition of pressure as i have already told you in the earlier lectures so the pressure always acts on a in a direction normal to the surface okay then we have see and if these pressure diagrams are drawn for every section that we have drawn for only one section and if you draw for a for every section then a three-dimensional prism will be obtained from the surface you can imagine from your own side if you draw it from for for this surface if you're drawing it like this okay and then for if you keep on drawing it for each and every uh, section for this also for this also if you keep on drawing it you will get a trapezoidal prism of this kind okay this is for basically a kind of horizontal for vertical surface okay this is the free liquid surface this is the front view you can see this is this view and this is the end view you can see from here and this is the trapezoidal prism this is the omega h1 this is omega h2 okay so and this volume of this prism will give the magnitude of the total pressure force on the surface the total pressure force is nothing but the pressure into area okay and the volume of this prism if sometimes we are provided with some kind of uh, uh, some kind of pressure diagrams in terms of this trapezoidal prism and if we are asked to calculate the total pressure force so the total pressure force is nothing but the magnitude of the total pressure force is nothing but the volume of this prism okay and the line of action of this force because i have already told you the line of action of this total force pressure force passes through the center of pressure so the line of action of this pressure force passes through the centroid of the prism okay the centroid of the prism and the projection of this line on the surface gives the location of center of pressure that means if if the if the centroid of the prism if we take the centroid of a prism at that or if we take on this surface this a b c d if we take like this so if we take it as this point and if we extend this line and when and the point at which this line intersects or this line touches this uh, horizontal the that's vertical surface at, at at the point at which it touches the vertical surface that point is known as the center of 
pressure this is very important that the centroid of the prism okay the line of action passes through the centroid and then the projection of this line on the surface gives the location of center of pressure and the volume of this trapezoidal prism gives the magnitude of the total pressure force okay very important concepts then these was that was all for the plane surface now we will talk about the curved surface please please pay very high attention this is this is just going to be a very simple and complicated both at the same time if you understand it clearly it is very simple but if you don't pay attention this time then it will always remain it, it will always remain a kind of mystery in your mind otherwise what happens in these cases okay so please please make up uh, please pay a uh, very attention for just two minutes and you will get everything very clearly okay see this is the curved surface you can see this is the curved surface first of all let me tell you one thing that this side of the surface is known as the the concave side you can say that is known as the oversight and this convex side is known as the underside okay so we have taken both the cases so first case is when on only oversight is exposed to fluid pressure when only oversight is exposed to fluid pressure what will have that df is equal to omega h into da because da is the area we have taken the small area okay and dfh that is the horizontal is omega h da because this is df so this is angle theta so you can say that dfh is equal to df df uh, into sin theta or omega h da sin theta and similarly df dfv that is the vertical component is omega h da cos theta okay the horizontal component of the total force that is fh is equal to integration of this dfh this will give you this thing vertical component of the total force fv okay this will give fv is equal to dfv this will give you this thing okay the horizontal component is equal to the total force on the projected area okay this is any area if you take the projected area so on the vertical plane represented by c d c this is the basically if you take this is the vertical component c d so it is equal to the total force on this projected area and it its magnitude would be omega into a into x bar and it acts at the center of pressure of c d it is then it becomes a, a case then it becomes a case similar to then it becomes a case similar to that of uh, vertical surface okay then 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 the vertical component is equal to the total weight of the fluid here is the catch here is the catch just pay attention okay vertical component is equal to the total weight of the liquid contained above the curved surface up to the free liquid surface this is very important this is the curved surface and the total weight of the liquid contained above the curved surface up to the free liquid surface means this much this much the volume into the density okay into the specific weight sorry the volume into the specific weight that will give you the entire vertical component of that force okay its magnitude would be weight of the liquid in the portion of a b c d e f a okay and the volume into the specific weight of the liquid and it acts at the centroid of the volume a b c d e f a okay this is this becomes very simple now the horizontal component is equal to the is equal to the total force on the projected area on the vertical plane okay and the vertical component is equal to the total weight of the liquid contained up to the free liquid surface okay that is the volume of this uh, volume of this uh, curved surface up to the free liquid surface okay a volume of the curved surface up to the free liquid surface into the specific weight of the liquid okay and it acts on the centroid of the volume okay this is the case when the overside is exposed to fluid pressure and when another case when only underside is exposed to pressure this is the underside i have already told you convex side okay in this case the horizontal component calculations are same as previous case okay horizontal component calculations are same because in this also if you will take the projected area and the horizontal component will be same but the vertical component if for the vertical component what we will see what we will consider we will consider an imaginary fluid on the overside we will consider an imaginary fluid on the overside and then we will calculate it in the same way okay if we will consider in the same way that it is equal to the weight of the liquid contained up to the free liquid surface okay but the main catch here is that this f the vertical component 
what we will consider uh, while taking the liquid on the overside it will be in the downward direction but actually it will be in the upward direction okay so this is the catch the direction of forces will be reversed when calculations are done for oversight because if we will calculate from the oversight we will take the horizontal component in this side okay but actually for this case it is in this side okay and for the vertical component where we will consider the liquid on the oversight we will take it uh, downwards but actually it is in the upward so this is the main catch that you just have to reverse the direction when the calculations are done for overside and when it is to be changed for the underside okay and this horizontal and this uh, total component of force that will act for the from the overside it will be towards this downwards but it will be upwards actually okay so please make a note that these directions need to be changed these directions need to be changed when the calculations are done from overside and underside and then for any regular surface you can have the resultant force that's f fr is equal to under root of fh square plus fv square and the 10 theta the angle at which this force x can be given by uh, 10 theta of vertical force by horizontal force and when the liquid when there is any surface that is exposed to the fluid pressure on both the sides means there is a underside also and the overside also so the it will be a very very complicated kind of a case and you have to simply do it step by step considering one liquid at one side and another liquid on another side and then you have to combine the forces you have to take a resultant of the horizontal forces and take a resultant of the uh, vertical forces and then accordingly do the calculations please just follow these simple steps you have to you have to follow the simple steps one by one for the overside and underside and every kind of a problem can be solved using these simple concepts just uh, if you want you can just go to the previous slides and you can just see the again the concept of the cur curved surface the vertical component of the curved surface especially and you can just and you can just uh, understand it clearly and and my personal advice will be to all the viewers who sees this please try to solve some some questions you can you can you can follow any text standard textbook and you can solve uh, as many problems as on these cases to get a familiar idea or to get a, a better idea of what i have told you okay so this is all for this lecture in the next lecture we will come up with buoyancy and flotation okay so this is all for this one thank you and have a good day